if my limbs grow, then they will be enough to feed the, the good students. Afred is a community-based organization. Our main purpose is using tourism as a tool to promote conservation. So by plowing ecotourism revenues in community development projects like education, health and sanitation, uh, the local people understand the value of conservation. People needed a secondary school and so Kafred decided to start a secondary school in 1993. It has a population of uh, 300 students currently and uh, 25 employees. Yeah, it's a conservation school and we promote conservation practices in, in the school and even they are, their motto is we conserve to develop, that's the school motto. Even when you go, you know, in the school compound, most of the schools here plant eucalyptus and pains in their compound. For Bigode Secondary School, they plant indigenous tree species. So. There's a lot of conservation, and there's also a conservation club um, in the school with a sign welcoming you to the school. We're proved to be inferior. Timothy, the elephant will be inferior. Inferior, the elephant. Of course, the school, you know, is, is big, um, so they eat um, most of the food, and uh, it's also not enough. This is the Matoke, which feeds the good secondary school, both the teachers and the students. So they feed the Matoke here on a daily basis. They are about three acres. For this school, we don't prepare stuff that we need to buy from outside this village. Otherwise, it becomes unsustainable. Bananas we buy from the neighbors, those who have banana plantations. Then tomatoes we buy from the good trading center. Apart from maybe the oil that they use to cook and the salt, the rest comes from, the food, real food comes from this village. I'm one of the founders of Kafred, so we are the ones actually who initiated to build that school. So these are the Irish potatoes. They are here. Genuts. They have just harvested. When they dry, they crush and sell. Locals produce the food and they sell it to the school. Fortunately here, this area is very fertile, so we practice agriculture and uh, we produce our own food that we eat and sell the surplus. This type of, of, of the weed is not good in the garden. That's why when you are planting, you try to remove it. When you are planting, you just get a, a small bunch of beans like this, then you put them in your mouth. Uh -huh. Then afterwards you saw it using your tongue and you put two two for the whole you are making. So you start planting on them. But if you have in bulk, Maybe this time if they can give me a contract because I have enough beans. If my my if my beans grow, then they will be enough to feed the, the good students. When the season is high, when the peak season, we are teams cut, matoke, put on our truck, then to be good for other people to access. We provide market to the farmers, sometimes when they have nowhere to serve. Looking at this area, this area is, is already rural. And if you're getting food from towns, so you expect the prices to be, to be up. Children contribute some, some food, they bring some food at school, and you know, the school also 
or get small staff. And some of them, some of our suppliers are parents at the same time who cannot afford paying the, the fees we charge here. So they give us supplies and we allow their children to study. So we do the processing, grinding, and then we prepare for them. So before me here are some of my students trying to pack the food that these people had just brought. The other store where we reached is where we keep the unprocessed food, especially the unprocessed maize. We keep it on the other side together with the bean. Now after processing the maize, after milling, then we again use this room as another store. These are the onions we use for frying. This is the cooking oil we use for frying their food, the onions. For the tomatoes, the onions and the cooking oil we buy it from town. Each student for the maize they bring 20 kilograms, that is for the, the scholars. Then for the beans they are supposed to bring 10 kilograms for the, the scholars. For the borders, each student is supposed to bring 40 kilograms of maize, then 16 kilograms of beans. That one serves us for the whole day, for both lunch, breakfast and supper. What they eat is mainly posho, which is corn um, with beans. I'm <laughs> <laughs> Take him out to first. I will be a man Every meal we always prepare 40 kilograms of maize flour, then 20 kilograms of beans. Yes, there are gardens um, in the school. Oh, these gardens are owned by the staff members. Sometimes after they harvest, we may decide and buy from them. When the staff members have harvested, like cassava, like uh, potatoes, we also buy from them. This is uh, some of the staff's harvest that we decided to buy. After seeing that what they had brought was not yet enough, we decided to buy what the staff members had harvested. So we resorted to making it ourselves. Yeah. This, this now belongs to the school. Uh, we are trying to open up the school farm. We have just started with cultivating the bananas. We are also hoping to put some animals, keep them within the school farm. The children get involved as well. Um, 
there is a general like school garden where the kids work. Also during their agriculture lessons, they're required to do practicals so that they go in the garden and they practice because agriculture is one of the subjects that they learn in school. The students participate in the weeding, planting and the marching of the gardens. Now, the agriculture class sometimes, in case of any demonstration, then they just bring them here. There is always a complaint by the students. Uh, just feeding on, on the same meal every, every time. But when we tried to handle it with parents, the parents said because they are poor, that's what they can afford. We had planned to buy G-nuts sort of ground nuts, but the funds cannot allow. That is why we even initiated this project. But when our school plantations are mature, then we can change the diet at least like twice a week. Carfred is an NGO to conserve nature. So the money that is got from the tourists, we decided to build the school to cater for the children of the people who border the national park. Actually, the major principle is to empower the younger children to acquire education. When the children excel, they can also access employment in the park and also in the government sectors. The good thing is that the food here is, is local, um, you know, from the garden to the school. So that means it's not just local, but it's fresh. Agricultural practices here are sustainable. We don't use chemicals, no chemical fertilizers, no sprays. So that, you know, makes the food very good for the kids.